The 9K32STREL-A2 is a manned portable, shoulder-fired, low-altitude surface-to-air missile system with a high explosive warhead and passive infrared homing guidance, broadly comparable in performance with the U.S. Army-43 Finnish Marcus Red Eye, which was designed in 1959. It was the first generation of Soviet manned portable SAMs, entering service in 1968, with series production starting in 1970, described by one expert as being the premier Russian export line. The Strela and its variants have seen widespread use in nearly every regional conflict since 1968. Development. The end of World War II saw a major shift in Soviet defense policy. The advent of long-range, high-altitude, nuclear-armed American bombers, capable of penetrating Soviet airspace at heights and speeds unreachable and unmatchable by anti-aircraft guns and most interceptors, appeared to render every conventional weapon obsolete at a stroke. Numerous long-range, high-altitude SAM systems such as the SAR-1 Guild and SAR-2 Guideline, were rapidly developed and fielded to counter this large vulnerability. Due to the apparent obsolescence of conventional arms, however, relatively little development took place to field mobile battlefield air defenses. This direction was soon changed with the beginning of the Korean War, an entirely conventional conflict. It proved that nuclear weapons were not the be-all and end-all all of warfare. In the face of a powerful and modern American Air Force carrying non-nuclear payloads, the Soviet Union invested heavily in a multi-tier air defense system, consisting of several new mobile SAMs, to cover all altitude ranges and protect ground forces. The new doctrine listed five requirements. Front-level medium to high altitude area defense system 9K8 Krug. Army level low to medium range area defense system 3K9 Cub. Division level low altitude short range system 9K330SA. Regiment level all weather radar guided gun systems at SU 23 4 Shilka and very short range missile systems STRELA 1. Battalion level man portable STRELA 2. Both STRELA-1 and STRELA-2 were initially intended to be manned portable systems, as the STRELA-2 proved to be a considerably smaller and lighter package. However, the role of the STRELA-1 was changed, becoming a heavier, vehicle-mounted system with increased range and performance to better support the ZSU-23-4 in the regimental air defense role. As developed Development began in the Turop of OKB. Detailed information on the design of the US-43 Finnish Marcus Red Eye became available. While it was by no means a simple reverse-engineered copy, in many ways the Strela design borrowed heavily from the Red Eye, which had started development a few years earlier. Due to the comparatively primitive Soviet technical base, development was protracted, and many problems arose especially in designing a sufficiently small seeker head and rocket. Eventually, the designers settled for a simpler seeker head than that of the Red Eye, allowing the initial version, the 9K32 STRELA2, to finally enter service in 1968, five years behind schedule. Improvements The initial variant suffered from numerous shortcomings. It could only engage targets flying at relatively slow air speeds and low altitudes and then only from rear hemisphere. It suffered from poor guidance reliability, and even when a hit was achieved, it often failed to destroy the target. Poor lethality was an issue especially when used against jet aircraft. The hottest part of the target was the nozzle behind the actual 
actual engine, which the missile therefore usually hit, but there its small warhead often failed to cause significant damage to the engine itself. In order to address the shortcomings, two improved versions were ordered in 1968, as an intermediate stopgap, the slightly improved 9K32M Strela 2M to replace the original, as well as the more ambitious STRELA-3, as the modifications introduced with the Strela 2M were relatively minor. The process was fast and it was accepted in service in 1970. The Strela 2M replaced the STRELA-2 in production lines immediately. Improvements were made particularly to increase the engagement envelope of the new system. Higher thrust propellant increased slant range from 3.4 to 4.2 km and ceiling from 1.5 to 2.3 km. Improved guidance and control logic allowed the engagement of propeller-driven and helicopter aircraft approaching at a maximum speed of 150 meters per second. Maximum speed of receding targets was increased from 220 meters per second to 260 meters per second. More automated grip stock provided a simplified firing method against fast targets. A single trigger pull followed by lead and super elevation replacing the separate stages of releasing the seeker to track and launching the missile. Contrary to what was at first reported in some Western publications, more recent information indicates that, while lethality on impact had proven to be a problem, the warhead remained the same 1.17 kg unit as in the original. This in fact remained the warhead of all Soviet MANPADS up to and including most 9K38IGLA variants to address the problem of poor lethality. A more powerful he filling than TNT improved fusing, a terminal maneuver, and finally a separate charge to set off any remaining rocket fuel were gradually introduced in later MANPADS systems. But the original STRELA-2 2M warhead design of a 370 grams directed energy he charge in a pre-fragmented casing remain. The seeker head improvements were only minor changes to allow better discrimination of the target signal against background emissions. Some sources claim that the seeker sensitivity was also improved. The only defense against infrared countermeasures remained the seeker head's narrow field of view, which could be hoped to help the rapidly slowing flare fall off the missile field of view as it was tracking a fast-moving target. In practice, chaff flares proved to be highly effective countermeasure against both versions of the STRELA-2. The seeker is commonly referred to as a hot metal tracker. The seeker can only see infrared energy in the near-infrared spectrum, emitted by very hot surfaces only seen on the inside of the jet nozzle. This allows only rear aspect engagement of jet targets, earning the weapon its other moniker as a revenge weapon. Since the missile has to change an aircraft after it has already passed by. The Strela 2M was also procured for use on board Warsaw Pact warships, installed on four round pedestal mounts aboard Soviet amphibious warfare vessels and various smaller combatants. The weapon remained unchanged but was assigned the NATO reporting name SARN-5. Grail. Description. The missile launcher system consists of the green missile launch tube containing the missile, a grip stock and a cylindrical thermal battery. The launch tube is reloadable at depot, but missile rounds are delivered to fire units in the launch tubes. The device can be reloaded up to five times. When engaging slow or straight receding targets, the operator tracks the target with the iron sights in the launch tube and applies half trigger. This action uncages the seeker and allows its attempt to track. If a target IR signature can be tracked against the background present, this is indicated by a light and a buzzer sound. The shooter then pulls the trigger fully and immediately applies lead and super elevation. 
This method is called a manual engagement. An automatic mode, which is used against fast targets, allows the shooter to fully depress the trigger in one pull followed by immediate lead and super elevation of the launch tube. The seeker will uncage and will automatically launch the missile if a strong enough signal is detected. The manufacturer lists reaction time measured from the carrying position to missile launch to be 13 seconds, a figure that is achievable but requires considerable training and skill in missile handling. With the launcher on the shoulder, covers removed and sights extended, reaction time from fire command to launch reduces to 6 to 10 seconds, depending greatly on the target difficulty and the shooter skill. After activating the power supply to the missile electronics, the gun awaits for electricity supply and gyros to stabilize, puts the sights on target and tracks it smoothly with the launch tube's iron sights, and pulls the trigger on the grip stop. This activates the seeker electronics and the missile attempts to lock onto the target. If the target is producing a strong enough signal and the angular tracking braid is within acceptable launch parameters, the missile alerts the gunner that the target is locked on by illuminating a light in the sight mechanism and producing a constant buzzing noise. The operator then has 0.8 seconds to provide lead to the target while the missile's onboard power supply is activated and the throw-out motor ignited. Should the target be outside acceptable parameters, then the light cue in the sight and the buzzer signal tell the gunner to re-aim the missile. On launch, the booster burns out before the missile leaves the launch tube at 32 meters per second and rotating at approximately 20 revolutions per second. As the missile leaves the tube, the two forward steering fins unfold, as do the four rear stabilizing tail fins. The self-destruct mechanism is then armed, which is set to destroy the missile after between 14 and 17 seconds to prevent it hitting the ground if it should miss the target. Once the missile is five and a half meters away from the gunner, approximately 0.3 seconds after leaving the launch tube, it activates the rocket sustainer motor. The sustainer motor takes it to a velocity of 430 meters per second and sustains it at this speed. Once it reaches peak speed, at a distance of around 120 meters from the gunner, the final safety mechanism is disabled and the missile is fully armed. All told, the booster burns for 0.5 second and the driving engine for another 2.0 seconds. The missile's uncooled lead sulfide passive infrared seeker head detects infrared radiation at below 2.8 micrometers in wavelength. It has a 1.9 degree field of view and can track at 9 degrees per second. The seeker head tracks the target with an amplitude modulated spinning reticle, which attempts to keep the seeker constantly pointed towards the target. The spinning reticle measures the amount of incoming infrared energy. It does this by using a circular pattern that has solid portions and slats that allow the IR energy to pass through to the seeker. As the reticle spins IR energy passes through the open portions of the reticle. Based on where the IR energy falls on the reticle the amount or amplitude of IR energy allowed through to the seeker increases the closer to the center of the reticle. Therefore, the seeker is able to identify where the center of the IR energy is. If the seeker detects a decrease in the amplitude of the IR energy it steers the missile back towards where the IR energy was the strongest. The seeker's design creates a dead space in the middle of the reticle. The center-mounted reticle has no detection capability. This means that as the seeker tracks a target as soon as the seeker is dead center, there is a decrease in the amplitude of IR energy. 
The seeker interprets this decrease as being off target so it changes direction. This causes the missile to move off target until another decrease in IR energy is detected and the process repeats itself. This gives the missile a very noticeable wobble in flight as the seeker bounces in and out from the dead space. This wobble becomes more pronounced as the missile closes on the target as the IR energy fills a greater portion of the reticle. These continuous course corrections effectively bleed energy from the missile reducing its range and velocity. The guidance of the SAR-7 follows proportional convergence logic also known as angle rate tracking system of ProLogic. In this method, as the seeker tracks the target, the missile is turned towards where the seeker is turning towards, not where it is pointing at, relative to the missile's longitudinal axis, against a target flying in a straight line course at constant speed. The angle rate of seeker to body reduces to zero when the missile is in a straight line flight path to intercept point.